Hey everybody and welcome to session zero. Um, be sure you're aware of the news feed where uh, current messages about what's going on in the class are posted. We're going to go take a look at the content module and I'm going to walk you through it as fast as I can. I have already made this video previously and I've already made it over 15 minutes so I'm basically if I do that I start over. So I've started over and I'm going to try to keep this under 15 minutes. Um, before I go into the content I'm going to go over here to grades and checklist and I'm going to open up the session zero checklist and I'm going to have that handy um, off to the side as I kind of go through the items on this checklist. So you can also do that each each module, each session. You can um, click things, select them, and check them off as you complete them. And that's really handy for letting you know what you've done in a given session and what remains to be done. I think it's really handy. And it also tells you when you did it. Um, this checklist also appears in the module itself. You'll see that in a minute. And it's slightly slightly different format but also in a way that you can check it off of there as well. It's kind of cool. You can check it off in two, two different ways. Okay, so if we go to content, um, currently I only have one session open, and as much as several of you will be clamoring for me to open the rest up immediately, I'm not going to do it until at least a week into this first session. So I'm going to wait at least a week into the first semester. There's a reason for that, because people they, they just start racing. They race into session one, and, and there's just a small issue with racing into session one where we form groups. Um, we need to wait until the roster, excuse me, we need to wait until the roster has settled down, which doesn't happen for several more days. I think we need to wait until all the students arrive, and um, we need to let everybody kind of get situated, and then I will be opening up the rest of the class. I am happy to do that, and to do that very quickly. Um, but, so there's two issues. One is I don't want to open it up, everything up immediately. The second issue is I can't currently open everything up anyway. I have work to do to sort of straighten out some of the threads that I have been changing and improving, I hope. I've made some improvements. And that's why this class is opening, has opened on, um, you know, Monday at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and not sooner. It's because these improvements run through the entire class and they require adjustments in many places because of the way I design things with text. I use lots of writing, my own writing in the class, and, you know, I provide checklists. I put, you know, there's multiple places so that you hopefully, hopefully, know what's up. It's also about um, keeping everything totally consistent. So anyway, I'm still tweaking the upcoming sessions, so I couldn't open them for you right now even if I wanted to. Um, I need to keep keep doing that. But starting around uh, the halfway point of this first session, I will probably open up session one, and then I'll continue to revise those future ones, make sure they're ready to go, and then I'll slowly but surely get them open by hopefully February 1st. All right, so let's take a look at these um, pages. Notice how we end with the checklist at the end. Um, normally I'll put the checklist at the beginning, but in the first session I like to put it at the end to kind of keep it out of the way. But again, it's the same as this thing that I just showed you. All right, so you've got your, your welcome page. Uh, you can um, check out, you're watching this well, welcome video if you're watching it. It's right, it's going to be placed right here. Um, and I'm not actually going to say much about this page. I always have a welcome page with a welcome video. The one thing I would say is decorative means that welcome videos are optional. You don't have to watch them because I use text. I write everything out that you need to know. Um, okay, so we've got the syllabus. We want to go take a quick look at that. And your job is to read it. I took too long, I think, in the previous video talking about it, so I'm going to skip down more quickly. There's my contact information. Um, when you communicate with me, I will say this, I urge you to put things in the peer question and answer board in Course Den because it emails me as well. So I'm getting a contacted not only in Course Den when you post in the board, but I also get an email when you do that. And so I monitor the questions and things that are said in that board very closely. I recommend you use that if it's a question you think will benefit other people. 
and don't feel shy about you know, don't people just worry about looking like they're asking a dumb question but seriously there's I don't think there's such a thing I know there's so many details in here there's no way you can know the answer to everything there's gonna be some things that are not clear and I know that um, I also recommend that you put things in course in mail because that's actually a higher priority than my email but at the same time, if you want to, you can be a squeaky wheel and you could send me a course in mail, for example, email, for example, and you could copy it, copy me on my West Georgia email and say, hey, I sent you a course in email. Could you take a look? Or you could even send me a text message. So you can be a squeaky wheel. I don't, wheel, squeaky wheel. I don't mind if you do that. Um, all right, skipping down, taking too long. Make sure you read the course objectives. That kind of tells you how, what we're doing and why. Um, this class is Quality Matter Certified. I need to get the um, this QM logo in my class. Yep, I don't have it up there. I need to get that in there. Um, we have a textbook. You want to make sure you get the textbook. And if you're not in K-12 and you never have been, that's not an area that you are at all familiar with, then go ahead and contact me and talk about your textbook alternative. We do have, we always have a few students that are not in K-12, which is kind of cool, um, you know, for everybody because then we have a diversity of perspectives because diffusion of innovation is not just about diffusion of innovations in K-12, it's about in organizations, most, most often in educational organizations, but um, that could be in higher ed, that could be in industry, um, and diffusion of innovations does not necessarily even have to relate to education at all. So we do have some students that, you know, are very in very unique situations. And so I hope you all will uh, contact me. You do have to have a TK20 subscription. And beyond all of this, I'm going to stop talking. It's your job to read this and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, the second item in the... Um, so let's, 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 just, let's just pretend. The next thing you want to do is you want to read the course plan and um, be aware that this could change based on class needs. Okay, so let's take a quick look at that. I love this document, my favorite document, even more so than syllabus. But in the first column, we've got the dates and the sessions that this class has in it. So this class has seven sessions. Most of them are two weeks in length, but the last one is one week. That's kind of good to know. We also have the one week spring break where everything grinds to a halt. And please forgive me if I don't answer emails as well during that break, because I try, I'm gonna try to take that break as well. Um, we'll see what I'm doing. I may be at a conference during spring break, but I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna stay here and try to get some writing done. So I may check out somehow. I may go on a holiday, I may go to a educational conference, I may be writing, you know, trying to get a journal article written. I may not be as good at responding. So that's there for a reason. It is break. But we do have two weeks, two week modules for the most part. We have um, sort of topics and then you see these yellow highlighted optional live meetings. Those are really like optional live. I'm going to call them office hours because that's more accurate. I think when it says meeting, some people expect like a presentation, but I don't do a presentation. I just, I'm there to take questions, comments, chat, whatever. Um, and again, they are optional. The access info is right here. Um, the sessions, have, this is what, these are the assignments that are worth points and they're due at the end of the session um, in which they, they are sort of displayed. Okay, so like, I'll give you an example. This reading journal part one, it's sort of mentioned in session zero, session one, session two, but it's not due till session three. So you start working on it here, but, um, and so that's one thing that this doesn't do. It doesn't tell you what you've started working on. Another thing that you start working on um, earlier than it shows up, like is this thing, this tech integration part one, you'll start working on that in session one, probably. Yes, for sure. So, um, you know, this just shows you the deadline for whatever the, the thing is. So you want to make sure you're kind of, you know, learning what that thing is ahead of that and getting into those sessions in a timely fashion. Okay. If I make changes to this, I will note them systematically here and I will um, also make an announcement in course then. All right, so you want to read that course in, uh, course plan, excuse me, more carefully. All right, you also want to read the tips on not getting dropped from this class. Um, the the main idea is check your UWG email feverishly. 
Um, you also want to make sure that you are parallel to all of the classes you take, staying on top of advising information for your program area. So if you're in instructional technology, go in there, work through that class. If you're in school library, go in there and work through that class. And make sure you're aware of really important information, like do you have a portfolio you have to submit? And by when do you have to apply for graduation? The answer to that is yes. By when do you have to do that if you are planning to graduate? You know, that kind of information is there. All right. Um, so I'm checking these items off. You want to obtain the course textbook. I've already said that, but let's go take a look at it. Let's just go eyeball that really quickly on the next page. Um, obtain that course textbook and contact me if you are not at all K-12 related or interested. Okay, um, re again, y'all need to be reading in more with more care. I'm just kind of glossing over it. Optionally, fill out the student contact form. It's really great when you do that. Um, optionally, update your course in profile. It's great if you do that so people know more about you. They can go quickly learn about you that way. Um, I recommend you get coursed in notifications, but I totally understand if you don't want to. I have lately stopped, I've like aggressively turn off notifications because partly because apps and websites are much better at signing you up for them automatically. So we have to be more aggressive, but I do think that coursed in notifications are worth it. I actually get them on my phone all the time and they help me make sure that I'm building classes appropriately that I have everything up to date. They're, they're helpful to me. I love them. And as a student, I have loved them in the past. Um, I had mentioned the peer-to-peer -peer questions and answers board. You want to make sure that you're aware of that. Go take a look at it. You can, um, you know, post in here and I will um, get an email when you post in there. So it's like, it's kind of like you're emailing me when you do that. I always go and take a look at what people are talking about in there and I clarify and try to help out. But don't hesitate to also answer questions. You may know part of an answer. You may, um, you know, mostly know what you're talking about. I mean, don't hesitate to help one another out. Um, <clears throat> And again, use the session checklists like this one um, as you work through the class. All right. Um, read the Merriam-Webster De definitions of diffusion and innovation, which I've posted on the next page. You could also just go straight to Merriam-Webster and look those up yourself if that's easier to see than these um, embedded definitions. Um, all right. So let's look at session zero activities. This is where the course begins. You want to take a look at your first assignment, the reading journal. I lost my um, so sorry. So this is a new assignment. Um, take a look. I want to. I look forward to hearing what your questions might be. Um, I don't want to say too much. I would like for you to read this and then read these instructions. Um, they should be visible to you. And um, at first it might seem like a lot, but it, once you look more closely at what I've got here, you'll see things repeat. Like this is a book chapter, Roger's Diffusion of Innovations. It's just one chapter and I make you read pieces of it throughout the class. It's a chapter that's like 37 pages long and you read different chunks of that chapter throughout the class. So here you see you're reading like six or seven pages. Um, here you're reading, you're simply reading a brief like half page definition of the term change models. Here you're reading from the textbook which is a very light read. It's, it's a very small book, it's only 100 pages long um, and so uh, you generally only read about a chapter at a time. Um, not, not hard. Um, so it seems like it's a lot but it's really not. Like these essential conditions they take, uh, they take 10 minutes max to read. Some people will read them in four minutes. They're not they're not long. So I have lots of little light readings that I want you to do and become familiar with. And in the reading journal project, you are sort of taking keeping track of some definitions and takeaways. Um, so I want you to take a look at that, set up your, your own journal, reading journal for session zero through three, and then you're going to read this session's readings. Um, I provide scanned copies um, observing fair use of several of them. And finally, um, I want you to post your first discussion of the course, uh, one intro and two follow-ups, and you can take a sneak peek.